welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Dana, AKA Blondie Knots here on YouTube. And as you know, it is October, it's spooky season, it's time for Halloween, and I am ready to get in the spirit with you. So while I was kind of going over some projects in my head of what we could possibly make together this month, I thought of one of my spookiest projects of all. And not spooky in the sense of, ah, uh, scary. Scary in the sense of, what is that? So let me explain what I'm thinking. A little bit of backstory, I learned how to crochet in June of 2021 and by Halloween time, I was feeling confident. I was feeling ready to give something a try. So that is how I came up with this. <laughs> this is a crochet cardigan that I made in my first couple months of crochet and it is scary. It did not come out as planned, of course. And honestly, it has been sitting in a space bag ever since I made it. It has never seen the light of day. And it's just kind of overall a mess. Now, I don't want to knock it too much because this is one of the first things I made. And I think for a beginner, objectively, it is a pretty decent project. I'm very happy with the squares I made on this. I learned a lot when I was making these squares. This is something I wouldn't have the patience for now. So I'm glad to have these. But I want to turn this into something that could be a staple in my Halloween wardrobe. I want this to have its moment because I think it has great potential. It's just not done correctly. Now, obviously, when I made this the first time, I had no prior knowledge of crochet. I didn't have the insight to know how this project was going to go. So I really took all this time making all these squares. And then we ended up moving across the country here to Virginia. And it kind of fell on the back burner. I kind of lost interest in it. And then last minute, it was almost Halloween and I basically Frankensteined this piece together. So we got loose ends sticking out everywhere. We got a mess. It's kind of sort of pieced together. One sleeve fits, one sleeve doesn't fit, but we did at least arrive at a garment and we got an Instagram photo out of it. And that's really at the time all I wanted. But now that's just not good enough for me. As you can see, we have no border around the collar. It kind of fits funny. It's just kind of all over the place. It's not really my style anymore. And I would just love to make this into something a little more me, a little more wearable for me. And so that's how we got to this video idea today. I thought this would be a really fun project to take you along with me to see how we can transform this cardigan. I do already have a slight game plan of where I want to take this going forward with this project and where I would like to see this end up. So I will go over those details with you as we start taking this apart. But first things first, we need to pull back all the stitching on this, separate all these squares and just really go back to square one. That is the first order of business. We really need to just start from zero again, re map our whole plan and see where we go. So I will pass you over to me ripping back all the stitching on this, pulling these squares apart and really give you a game plan for where I want to see this go. All right, off we go. Let's see what kind of cardigan we can turn this into. Hi guys, I am so looking forward to starting on this jacket. I'm gonna start ripping it apart. And so I wanted to come on here and talk about kind of my plans moving forward with it. I've been sitting on this for maybe a week or so too, so I could like really think about it. And I think I have a good plan. So we're gonna take this all apart, obviously. Luckily, I thought I was going to have to seam rip these with my seam ripper apart because I thought I mattress stitched them together, but it looks like I just top slip stitched maybe you can see here a little bit so actually I think I'm just going to be able to unravel them which is like such a blessing to know I'm not going to maybe damage the squares by seam ripping because I almost always end up cutting yarn it's just inevitable when you're seam ripping squares so that's really really good news if I'm being honest I don't want this project to take up a whole lot more of my time because I put so much effort into these squares I do have done and I just know I don't have the patience for that anymore. Like realistically, I can't take that much time. I only gave myself a week for this video. So I'm thinking, right? What if I just expand the size of these granny squares? So what if I just make an extra row around them so they go from four inch to five inch granny squares? I think that would help a lot because that'll take up a lot more space for the cardigan. And then I thought I could make a bunch of five inch black granny squares and kind of almost 
checkerboard them, if you will, between the really fun squares and then the plain squares. I'm gonna completely do away with all of these regular single crochet squares I made. I'm just not feeling it to be honest. And I think that there's enough color in the fun squares that we don't need to add more color in with the blank squares. Plus then I can repurpose this yarn to make the borders bigger because I actually don't think I have these bright neon colors anymore. I actually don't even think I have the gray either. So I'd like to be able to reuse as much of the yarn as I can so I don't have to go buy new skeins if it's not necessary. Of course, if I have to, I'll go pick up one or two, but if I don't have to, I'm gonna do my best not to. Uh, yeah, so that's the plan. Just going to completely pull it apart. I'm going to repurpose all the yarn from the sleeves too so I can reuse that to make more squares. And then like I said, I'm just going to really do like a block style cardigan, kind of something like I showed you this before. It's kind of my idea. I just want the black granny squares in between to make it a little more wearable. This is just a little too colorful for me. So it'll tone it down a little bit, which I do love. Then I'm just going to put like a thick, chunky black ribbed border on it, I think all the way around the neckline and then the hem of the, well, everywhere you'd put a border, <laughs> the hem of the cardigan and then the sleeves too. I'm envisioning a crop style cardigan. So kind of something that will hit me at my like smallest point in my waist I think would be cute kind of oversized if I can manage to do that with what I have here yeah and just really putting in the least amount of work possible in terms of making squares so I'm fine with making these I can bust these out really quick we did some in our crochet and chat last week so I got a couple done there I have a few more that have just been working up so we'll see I've never made a block square cardigan so I don't know how many squares I need like off the bat I'll just have to lay it out and maybe lay like a cardigan I really like the fit of underneath or just lay on top of it like this and see if it fits and then I just want to put some large orange buttons on it I think that would be really fun you know a lot of those cardigans you see nowadays I feel like have those really big large buttons that kind of like act as almost a staple piece and I really like that I've never had something like that before so I'm I'm gonna give that a shot too. Just try a couple new techniques in this video because like why not? Also we're just gonna completely change the whole vibe of this. This is very you know with the bat sleeve I was really going for something here but I want this to be a lot more relaxed and almost like give you that 90s nostalgia of like that style of Halloween wear. I absolutely love that like it gives me the warm and fuzzies inside and so if I can replicate that with this I'll be a very happy girl. So yeah. All right, I think I've done enough talking. Let's start dissecting this thing, get it all ripped apart, and then we can lay out what I have so far and um, see if it's gonna be enough or if we need to make a little more. I definitely think I'll probably have to buy more black yarn though, if nothing else, but I'll keep you updated on all that too. So, okay, let's go. Can you tell I'm excited? <laughs> Hey, so pulled the whole cardigan apart. I have a bunch of balls of yarn that look like this now. I did about three fourths of one sleeve and then I kind of just stopped because I'm kind of done unraveling right now. And if I need more, I'll unravel more. But for now, I think that we're okay. And basically I'm just gonna go through and add an extra round around all these squares so they match my five inch granny square I was doing. These are all super cute. I did notice quite a few mistakes though as I was going along that I have made either. Some of them have quite a few extra stitches here and there so the, the square isn't perfectly square but I think with my final round I can hopefully buff quite a bit of that out and make it look a little bit better. But overall still pretty good and no squares were harmed in this which is even better. I didn't end up cutting any on accident or anything like that. So very happy with that. We have one, two, one, two three, three. So we have 24 fun decorative squares. So I think that's pretty good. Again, I don't really know how many I need right now, but my first goal is to make these all five inches before I go into um, assembling them and seeing how many more I need because that's gonna be easier once I actually know the size of the squares, you know? So yeah, basically, 
what I'm gonna do next, and I'm not sure how long it's gonna take, but just go ahead and add an extra round to each of these to make them five inches, and then we'll kind of lay it out and see how it's looking, but just glad to have this first part done. I was a little bit nervous about how I put this together, so taking it apart was gonna be a little tricky, and in some parts it was. I definitely have a couple spots where I was like, this doesn't make sense how I put it together like this, and I definitely wouldn't put this sweater together that same way now, but it's also cool to see my growth during you know, my crochet journey these last couple years obviously I know I've gotten better but then you see something you put together a couple years ago and you're like that's not correct so it's cool to see that and just see the difference so anyway now I'm going to take a break because this took me a couple hours and when we come back I'll just start working some squares up and I'll show you kind of how they're coming as we go along so that's next guys it's much later small change of plans when i put my five inch regular granny squares up against the squares a lot of them were already five inches which i didn't anticipate so i just had to tweak a few of them and add one row of single crochet to the outside to just a couple squares that were a little bit too small but other than that a lot of them were five inches so that saved us a lot of time but now as you can see this one is gray and not black because after I laid it out I was like well now I have all this leftover yarn that I rolled up from this project and it's otherwise going to go to waste I might as well make some more colorful squares to just add in even though that wasn't the original plan it could definitely still use a little bit more color just because the way we have it all spread out so I did lay like a template down I'll show you right now I need 10 more squares so let me mark that down on my phone I have a little chart going just so I don't get lost. Okay, so I need 10 more granny squares. So this is going to be the back paneling. They're not necessarily going to be in the order I have them in right now, but this is just like, like I said, just a little bit of a rough draft so you can see what I'm thinking. So basically my sleeves are going to be three by two. So that's three squares across, two squares down on both sides. So this is the back side I'm showing you right now. So I'm just missing one granny square I need to add in here, a plain one. And then this is the middle body section. It's gonna be three squares tall by five squares wide, the back is. So obviously you can see the back's kind of fully charted in, which is good, this looks good. You can tell it's definitely gonna be cropped, but since these squares are about five inches, that's about 15 inches long, which is still very cropped, but with a thick border on it and stuff, I think it'll be about the right size. And then I have three by two for this sleeve. So this is the entire back panel. And I think it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Then if we go up here, this is where it gets a little dicey. So I did start doing the front side, which is very hard probably for you to envision if you've never made a granny square uh, cardigan or any kind of cardigan really. But basically the only difference with this back side is we don't need that center panel. So we're just going to have Oh, look, I made a line. Two granny squares wide on this side by three tall, and that accounts for both sides. So essentially, both sides of the cardigan will look like this, and then this is our sleeve over here. So we're missing two more squares there, and then on this side, yeah, you can see it's really splotchy, but that's our other sleeve, so we're missing two here, one, two, three. So this whole side is missing five, and then this whole side is missing three, and then remember, we're not doing the middle, because that's where our neck is gonna go. So yeah, we leave that part empty, and then we'll basically just sew it all together, but I just like to lay them out like this just to give you a good visual. Uh, it's just easier for you to see that way. And then this way too, I can see kind of what other colors I wanna incorporate in. I have my little stash over here of colors. I also have my really cute spooky cup for my sparkling water while I'm working on this, but I have a little bit of green. This is my black I have left. Um, and like I said, I still have like a full other sleeve on the couch here that I can rip apart from. I have two smaller ones of the green some orange and then two little ones of purple which is okay i probably won't do a whole lot more purple and then this is all i have of gray so not a lot of gray left either but i think i still have some in my regular yarn stash i can pull from if need be but basically that's an entire day's worth of work taking that apart took a long time as anticipated, I figured it would, 
But yeah, and then just really mapping it out and figuring out where I want everything takes a long time too because I'm very particular about like where I want my colors to be connected and whatnot. And I get weird about like two black squares next to each other, which I'm just gonna have to like go a little bit because I'm a little limited in my choices just because of the fun squares I have. I can't change the color on obviously or add to. So tomorrow we'll make 10 more squares. We can easily get that done and then we can start the fun part of assembling. So we'll just assemble it and cross our fingers that it'll fit it, okay? But anyway, yeah, I had fun and I'm glad it's all apart. I really think it's gonna look a lot better in this new way. I'm really excited and I hope I actually want to wear it when Halloween time comes around every year. So I'm glad I'll have this done before Halloween too, so maybe I'll be able to wear it. But anyway, with all that being said, I will catch you in the morning. Let's catch up. So as you can see, I went to Miss Joanne. By the way, let me know if every time you go there, you pick up a reusable tote bag because I always seem to grab these. They're just so cute. I've never seen this one. And I know it's super summery, but I loved it and I had to have it. Anyway, so as I was working at my granny squares with the black yarn, I was like feeling it. And I couldn't tell if it was Red Heart Super Saver because again, I made this project in 2021. So I don't remember if I had known about Big Twist yet or if Big Twist was even around yet. I feel like Big Twist is something that's like slightly newer but I'm working the black yarn and I'm like I feel like this might be red heart super saver which is not my favorite yarn I find it's a little more scratchy than big twist value yarn so I decided to place a little quick Joanne order and I did pick up two skeins of the black value because I'll always use it and then while I was in store picking that up I was looking for buttons who knew that probably the hardest part of this project was going to be the buttons why is that? I had a very specific button in mind. I know that kind of sounds silly, but I had a specific size, a specific thickness in mind. I wanted four holes in the button. I just had a vision of the kind of button I wanted. And so I felt like I couldn't depict online if they were gonna meet my requirements. So when I got there, I was like, let me just go look and see if they have any. So orange is out of the question. There's no such thing as an orange button, apparently, especially in the size and style I wanted the button so we have to kind of ixnay the orange which is kind of a bummer but it'll be fine so we're gonna go for black I also thought maybe I would paint the buttons orange but now I feel like I'm just doing too much and they might ship and look weird and they might look painted which is not what I'm going for so that's fine I'm like okay I'll do black buttons I'm looking at all the black buttons there's all different sizes some of them are the right size but the thickness is too thin I wanted a chunky button I go over to the clearance section because I thought maybe I'll get lucky and I found some of the perfect buttons in clearance but two things. One, they were in a giant mason jar and I really didn't want 740,000 other buttons. So that was number one. And number two, why was it $27 on clearance? That's absolutely absurd. So that's gonna be a huge no. Okay, clearance is not working out. On my way out, I checked one more little section and I found these. So this is pretty similar to what I'm looking for. I can open them because they're mine now. They are, it just has six buttons. It's not giving me a size. Oh yeah, so it's one and three eighths an inch, which is exactly what I wanted. And the thickness is perfect. I also wanted this like kind of like rim on it. I told you I'm very specific about what I like. So that's exactly what I wanted, but there's only three black ones in this pack and there's three white ones. So I have, again, another idea cooking up and I'm thinking, okay, we can either do one of two things. We can do four buttons and go two black, two white, you know, alternate, or we just do three black buttons. So when we get to the ribbing, like this is way far in advance, but when we get to the ribbing, we'll have to decide. But for now, yeah, I have three white and three black. I'll probably put an Instagram poll up. So this is a good time to invite you again to join me on Instagram if you don't already, because I do a lot of voting for projects I'm working on there because I love hearing your guys' advice as I'm working through the week. So if you want to be involved and you're passionate about voting for buttons, follow me over there. This was also the most cost-effective way to do it because I paid 
for these buttons. I paid $2.89. That's way better than $27 and 7,048 million other buttons that I just simply don't need. I seriously need to get to work now. Sorry for that little long rambly, but as I was shopping for the buttons, I'm like, I need to update you guys. So I'm gonna keep working. We're gonna keep going. So let's just get to work and get those done today and then get to the fun stuff, which is assembling. So let's go. Sorry, the lighting is a little weird. It's actually nighttime of the next night. So we're a whole nother day into the project, but I've been editing on my computer all day and I have my camera charging right now. So I'm just doing this off my phone, but I wanted to show you how I laid the project out and how I think I'm gonna sew it all together. Also, somehow I miscalculated and I have three extra black granny squares than I thought. So that's weird, but okay, whatever, doesn't matter. But let me flip you around so I can show you kind of what we're working with here and how I think I'm going to sew them all together. So here's the back side, what I think it's gonna look like. I like the way I laid this out a lot. And of course, this wouldn't be a Halloween project without a spooky element to it. So the scary part is that I'm unfortunately going to be mattress stitching this whole entire cardigan together, which I literally hate mattress stitching. It's my least favorite thing to do in crochet. I thought I was going to surface join the crochet, but honestly, I just don't want to see that braid on top for this particular project. And I was thinking like, oh, whatever, I'll just do it anyway. And then I'm like, no, I need to do this right. This is like the remake. So in order to not have to remake it again, again, and just be happy with it this time around, I'm just going to do it right the first time. Well, the second time really, but the first time remaking it. So I did actually do one of my front panels already and I completely mattress stitched this whole thing together. So you can see here, it actually looks really good all mattress stitched, but yeah, this is the whole one front panel of the cardigan. So you can see it's like we said, three deep. And then the sleeves are three wide as well. So yeah, pretty, pretty good amount of work done here. I did this just last night as a test before I told you what I was going to do because I wanted to see how it was going to look and really how long it's going to take me. And it does take me quite a while, but at least it does look the way I wanted it to. And so that's good. So basically my next step is just going to be Oh gosh, mattress stitching all this together and then this other side too. I'm honestly not anticipating this being a very quick process, but I did wanna show you guys at least what I was thinking before I actually started doing it. So I'm gonna get to mattress stitching. I will catch you guys in the morning, but I just wanted to give you a quick update. Hopefully by tomorrow morning, I'll at least have the other front of this front panel done here and we'll see if we even get to the back yet. But otherwise I have all day tomorrow to work on this, which is really good. Today was just a big editing day. So I didn't get any time on this today at all, which is unfortunate, but it is the way it goes. So I will catch you guys in the morning for an update, but yeah, just wanted to give you like a little check in here. <laughs> Morning guys, how you doing today? I am coming in to chat with you and give you a little update on our project. Um, I'm scared. That's, that's the biggest update we have here. The math I did in my head, thinking I was gonna expand all the squares to a larger size, was gonna account for the fact that I only had three squares deep. And for some reason, in my head, I bypassed that little tidbit of knowledge when I told you guys, oh, I think these squares are already set at five inches. Like that's totally fine. I'll, I'll just leave it and move on. Well, come to find out the squares were only four inches and then my granny squares I made were also only four inches, not five inches. So this is a lot smaller than I thought it was gonna be. 
The reason I'm super nervous is because the length of it is so short now that they aren't five inch squares. And why did I think that these were five inches? I really don't know. I just got too excited to get to the stitching it back together part. I mean, it looks cute and all, but they're only four inch squares. So it's like, eh, I'm scared. You know, I said cropped is fine, but I don't mean like crop bolero crop. You know what I mean? So this is scary, but this is the length of our cardigan. So there's that. I should have just taken out a tape measure and measured to see if they were five inches or not, and then realized that they weren't, but whatever. Like, this is just where we're at right now. We're gonna have to make it work. Also, I explained last night that I was mattress stitching these instead of top stitching um, join as you go, and it actually worked out fine. Like, overall, it does look a lot more seamless. It looks good. I'm happy with that. I'm so scared to sew the all these panels together because I'm just afraid to see what the outcome is and what the final length is going to be. And then I'm gonna have to decide what I'm gonna do about that, if that's the case. And also then these sleeves might not be long enough anymore. So there, there's a lot of unknown at the moment and I'm just nervous. So I wanted to share that with you guys. I'm gonna stitch marker it up really quick so I can try it on, see if it's going to be way too short. If it's still super crop, I'm okay, but like a reasonable amount of crop. You know what I mean? Like there's a, there's a difference between purposely cute cropped and then just obscenely cropped like I'm wearing a sweater for aunts. Let me do that. Let me see what we're working with. Also think I'm gonna ixnay the dual buttons and I think I'm just gonna do three large black buttons. I think I'm gonna be too overwhelmed with the black and white. I also don't have a whole lot of white on the front. Like all the granny squares that have white are kind of on the back. So there's not as much white as I thought. I don't want it to look out of place. So, okay, that was a lot of updating, a lot of talking, but these were my thoughts keeping me up at night. Let me stitch marker this. Fingers crossed for me and I will update you in just one second. Well, I tried it on. I didn't show you because I forgot I'm just wearing a sports bra under this, but um, we have a problem. We have a big problem here. It's laughable almost how small this cardigan is lengthwise and the sleeves especially. It fits widthwise just fine. It's literally though this length is bad. I will overlay a picture of me wearing it really quickly for you. Hopefully I'll have one and I'll show you what it looks like on. Um, but yeah, it's bad. So give me a minute. I need to brainstorm now something for the sleeve length. I literally just don't know what to do. Of course, I want to just add like another round to the sleeves and to the bottom of the cardigan in granny squares, but I really, really, don't want to make more of these character squares. Big miscalculation on my end. I got too cocky and too excited and now I'm here and this video is due very soon. So I'm gonna need to think quick and figure something out that's still super cute. I'll let you know when I think of that because right now I just need to literally brainstorm. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah, this is project sometimes. Okay, give me a minute, I'll be back once I have a good plan for us. Well, it's been about 15 minutes of me staring at this and I think I have an idea for what I wanna do. Let me show you really quick. I'll flip you around and show you what I'm thinking. Remember how I told you I had those extra granny squares? So I have three extra granny squares and I put them up here. I'm going to essentially add one more panel up to the top just to make the bottom a little longer and they'll be folded in half. So that's gonna add, you know, quite a bit of extra length. I just set them here so I could see like if I put a black one every other, what that would look like. So we'll get a little bit of extra length by doing that. And then my next plan after that is we're going to add one more set of granny squares to the sleeve. So we'll add four more to each side. I'm just gonna do regular granny squares and hope nobody notices that they don't have little guys on them. Of course, you guys will know, but I hope you guys won't tell anybody or it won't look too bad, let's hope. But I feel like we can mask it by having some colorful ones in, like they don't look as obvious as the black ones do even. So honestly, we're gonna have to go to Joanne, buy a green, buy a orange. And then again, just to reiterate, I think just putting that thick ribbing on, like literally this thick, on the bottom will be enough 
extra length down here where we'll be all right doing that. But yeah, so new plan is to add that extra round here. So I need 15 more granny squares. Yay. Love that for me. So it looks like we're going to have a late night. Uh, we're going to make a lot of granny squares, 15 more, which is so fun. It's really no big deal. I just can't believe I underestimated that much and didn't double check to make sure that they were at the five inch mark. So it's fine. It's totally okay. But yeah, I guess now I'm going to go get in my car. I'm going to go to Joanne. I was already out today, but that's okay. I'm going to go to Joanne, get that yarn so we can get going and hopefully just get this done ASAP. That's that. I think that's all I have to tell you right now. And I will talk to you guys soon. Oh my gosh, guys, we are back on track. Thank goodness. Full disclosure, I was thinking about this last night as I was putting all this new work together and I was like, why did I fumble this week's project so hard? I'm just so surprised with myself about the four to five inch granny square dilemma I had. And it all kind of came together to me because I was like, oh, you know what? I was supposed to go on vacation this week. I was supposed to be gone for like a week and a half and it just, it fell through unfortunately. So we didn't end up going away, but I think my brain still went on vacation without me because I just did some silly things this week that I feel like I don't usually do. And especially as someone who considers himself to be a pretty experienced crocheter, I was very disappointed in myself for these mistakes this week, but it's fine. We're all back on track now. I wanted to update you on all the things that changed and how we got to where we are now. So here's what we're working with now. Okay, the sleeves are still a little bit short, but that's nothing that a little bit of blocking and a little bit of ribbing and just bringing it all together won't fix. So last time I talked to you, I told you I was gonna make a bunch more granny squares, place them up here to elongate it and then put some at the end of the sleeve. Totally changed that plan entirely because once I laid them all out, I thought about how if I added all of those extra granny squares to the top here, it was going to make this sleeve so much bigger. And this sleeve is already way, way big enough as is. I have plenty of room and I didn't need any more room in the sleeve section. So I just left it because I was like, wait a minute, why don't I just add them to the bottom of the cardigan to give it length there instead of adding them to the top to give it more shoulder length. I didn't need more shoulder length. So I ended up doing a whole nother row of granny squares at the bottom. I really don't think you can tell too much that they're not the, you know, the fun squares we had. I feel like it still kind of all fits in together all the same. And then I did end up actually going in after I sewed all of these pieces together, all the new pieces, the same mattress stitch way. And I ended up putting a little bit of extra paneling to connect it in here. And I did run that up all the way through the arms just to connect it that way. So it did give just a slight more bagginess, but not too, too much, but I really just wanted a connection panel a little bit here. So this was just one more row of like double crochet granny square here. So that is all that I did to fix this sweater to get it into a state of wearability. I feel like this, this project in me just you know, we've really just been button heads. Anyway, we're back on track. All that's left now is the ribbing. Thank goodness. I'm so happy about that. I'm going to just do the ribbing for the bottom. Very loose. I'm not looking for a scrunch bottom on this cardigan. I want it to be loose in the same size as the bottom of the cardigan is now. So I'm not going to scrunch the bottom part. I'm going to scrunch the arms so that they'll come in a lot and make it more balloon sleevey. Both of these arm cuffs will be made to my wrist size and then I'll just attach them that way. And then the neckline one, obviously there won't be any decreased scrunching in there as well. I want to keep this also the same as it is now. The only other thing I think I had to update you was is that when I did the sleeves, I ended up putting the granny squares on facing downwards so that when your arm is down, they're going the right way. And I feel like that was the right choice to do that instead of how I originally thought I would just put the owl, let's say this way almost. So he'd be turned so that when your arms are out like this, all the squares are going the same way. Hopefully that makes sense. But I feel like doing them so that when your arm is down, you know, you can see the spider or see the owl better. I think that looks better too. Goodness, what a week. 
this was this project was really supposed to be a quick make for me and just fast turnaround and then able to kind of get into market prepping because i have a market next week so i really thought this was just going to be a fun little project and it ended up taking me the entire week today's friday so yeah it was a week long a solid week long project that's where we're at right now so that's what i'm going to do today and i will show you how i do the buttonhole section once i get to that part of the project so okay that's all for now. Okay guys, really quickly, I wanted to show you how I do a horizontal buttonhole because I feel like a lot of people are probably gonna ask me how to do this. I think it's something that seems really intimidating, but it's so, so easy. So right now, the way I have the project positioned is actually um, the bottom is facing this way down. So I'm looking at it upside down, you're looking at it right side, but it doesn't matter what side you start on. Uh, I'm just letting you know where I'm starting. So. Just for reference, my ribbing right here is seven half double crochets wide. You either want to do this with single crochet or half double crochet because if you do any larger, you're going to get major like gapping. It's not going to be as snug of a hole and you don't want this hole to be crazy unstable. You do want it to have some integrity. So basically all I'm going to do is do three half double crochets. I'm working mine in the back loop for this ribbing. So just keep that in mind too. So I have three half double crochets done now, just like that, regular. And then I'm just gonna chain up three. One, two, three, because remember my buttonholes are actually quite large for this project. So that's why I chained three. Typically I would chain one or two, depending on the size of the button, but you're just gonna have to gauge it and see what you think. And then I'm going to skip three of my half double crochet stitches here. So one, two, three, skip. And then I'm just gonna work one more half double crochet into that last hole here, oh, excuse me, into that last stitch so that it creates this hole. See that there? And then the next row, I'm just gonna work directly over the top. And so it's gonna create, I'm gonna show you on this side where I actually have the buttonholes. They're gonna look like this after which is just absolutely perfect. They're so simple. It's so easy to do buttonholes. Really the hard part is just mathing out where you want them to be. But once you do that, it's so easy. And then it just looks so much more professional and it doesn't, you know, really affect the, the shape of the ribbing. I'm gonna back this out so you can really see the ribbing here. It doesn't get messed up by those buttonholes. So it's really neat. It's a really cool addition to your crochet projects. I just wanted to show you seriously how easy it was really quick. I already did, like I said, the side that needed the buttonholes, but I wanted to show you on this side really quick while I was still working on the project and could show you. So I'm just gonna take this out because I'm not actually working buttonholes on this side. I'm just gonna sew the buttons on this side and obviously make sure they're directly parallel to the buttonhole. So that is all I wanted to show you really fast. Now I'll see you at the reveal, but yeah, I hope that was helpful in case you've never done a buttonhole before. Okay, I'll see you in just a minute. I'm so excited. Right, guys just got back from taking final photos also look what was at my front door when I got here it's a Frankenstein sweatshirt I got it from American Eagle who should basically sponsor me at this point because I feel like all my clothes are from American Eagle if I don't make them myself but I'm just I love it I thought it was perfect so I threw it on really fast because that cardigan is pretty hot I'm not gonna lie being it's made of all acrylic it's kind of toasty and it's about 
I think 75, 80 degrees today, so it's a little warmer, but I thought we could do a final wrap up, talk about the cardigan in full now that it's finally done. I've said a million times already, it really just took it out of me this week. Seriously, especially today, weaving in all the ends and putting the ribbing on, my eyes were strained so bad. I mean, my eyes just like hurt now. I'm honestly gonna probably pop on my glasses, throw my hair up and just decompress for a little bit before I start editing this because yeah, my eyes hurt, my mind hurts. It was just quite a week for me. Like I said, I think my brain went on vacation. But other than that, let's talk about the logistics of this cardigan. Overall, I like it. I think it came out good. Let me grab it, hold on. Yeah, I do really like it. Really happy with the ribbing and the buttons especially. I've actually never put buttons this large on a project and I really thought it added the perfect little touch. I felt like it was so on brand for this sweater to have these big buttons. It's still a lot more colorful, like I said, than I would have liked it to be. And there were some things I couldn't fix about it, like the fact that, you know, these ends aren't woven in well and stuff, but that was just prior me's mistakes. And so just gonna have to go with it. I was thinking about selling it and putting it up on Etsy. I just don't know if I should because there's so many ends that look like that. I mean, you can see all throughout. So it's definitely not my best work. And if I put it up, I would definitely put it up for a lot lower price than obviously I put in. I probably put like 90 hours into this project in total. I don't even know what I put in last time I made this, but I, I would have to guess overall, this project probably took me 90 hours of my time. So obviously I wouldn't price it at that, but I don't know if this is something you'd want measurements on and maybe would like to purchase for yourself. Let me know if this is something you could see yourself getting a lot of wear out of. I definitely see myself wearing it more because it's way more wearable now than it was. I mean, before it was just, I mean, you saw it completely unwearable. It fits perfectly now. The fit is 10 out of 10. I'm so happy with the fit after all those problems that we had with it. The extra granny square at the end just made it perfect. I mean, the sleeves on me are so good and I'm 5'10", so my arms are just in nature longer. So yeah, it just, it really all worked out. I'm so glad. I'm so grateful it all worked out. I loved the thick ribbing on the bottom. I think that that was a perfect touch. I love what that added to it. Yeah, I'm just overall very happy with it. I definitely think it was a huge improvement from the last time I did it. Granted, three years ago, I had a lot less experience. I could have never made something probably this well three years ago, but that's the beauty of progression and getting better at something is that you have something to show for it. And this is so much better than it was. And so for that, I am proud of it. I'm just a very harsh critic on myself because you know, I'm the creator, so I can be. But overall, I would love to know what you guys think about it. If you like how bright it still is, if you've had some major brain fart projects in the past and how you overcame them, I, anything you want to talk about i'll be in the comments chatting with you guys i need to catch up on my last crochet and chat comments because this project like i said consumed my life so i'm a little bit behind also i haven't plugged this in a while but if you want to donate to my channel i do have a buy me a coffee link in the description and anything you donate goes right back into the channel and making it the best it can possibly be and being able to afford to make good cool projects because materials are so expensive i mean you guys remember the whole button thing earlier this week also so if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I would just absolutely love to have you here. I post new videos every Monday and Thursday. They're always crochet related. We have a lot of fun. This was my last Halloween project of the season. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And next week, I'm gonna be coming at you with a market vlog because I have a market this weekend. So I need to step it back into gear and go back into it. So if that interests you, I'd love to have you here. Otherwise, please don't forget to like the video, comment down below, all the good things, share this with your other crochet friends who maybe need some inspo on revamping old projects or love a good Halloween project because who doesn't? Don't really have much else to say. I will be seeing you guys on Thursday. We have another crochet and chat, of course, in costume. Thank you so much for letting me take up a little bit of your time here on the internet today. Have a great, wonderful week. I love you guys and I will see you soon. Bye!